Hello. I think we're live. Hello, hello. I'm just going to make sure here that I can see questions or whatever. Let me start this, mute that. All right. We are, we are in business. Welcome, welcome. Uh, if you don't know me already, I am Tracy Lewis Stokel. I am an online course consultant and coach here at Tracy Teaches. And this is my group. This is my place. I, I do all the things here. Um, I wanted to pop in here today and talk to you about something, a trend that I'm seeing, um, especially with members of this group, but I'm sure is um, you know prevalent outside of this group as well. And that is blaming marketing for the fact that we're not selling our courses. And so I want to um, unpack that a little bit for you today in just a few minutes and kind of share my takeaways. So if you join us live, uh, please just pop a comment in and just say that you're here. If you join in the replay, um, definitely let me know that too, just a hashtag replay and uh, just show me, show me some love so I know you're here. If you have any questions at any point during the live or after, please post them in the comments as well so that I can address those for you. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to serve you. So let's get to it. So when I started my business five years ago, I was still working a corporate job and I sort of just started piecing things together. I sort of just, uh, you know, I, I knew I needed an email list. So I set that up and I knew I needed a group. So I set that up and I just did all these things was sort of without any real strategy or intention. And I've always sort of blamed my lack of strategy <laughs> on the fact that my business doesn't grow faster and all the things. What I've realized recently is that it's not the strategy as much as the intention that holds most people back. So I'm actually going back in my business, just as a note, footnote, like a rebrand is coming because I'm going back now and restructuring everything and recreating everything for kind of from the ground up so that it works better, that it just takes less of my time, more automated, all the great, great things. So um, I'm excited to share that journey with you guys, because if you're just building your business, I think there's a lot to learn from watching somebody who's been in business for a while and has been making money in their business, all of a sudden just kind of scrap it all and start over. A little terrifying, a little exhilarating, it's all the things. But for you guys, um, when, when people come into my group, they answer three questions. The first is, when do you plan to get started creating your own course or program? The second is, what are you looking for in the group? And then the third, of course, is, can I have your email address so that we can stay in touch? Because without that email address, if Facebook decided to cease to exist, I would not be able to get in touch with you. And then, shoot, hold on. I would not be able to. There we go. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I had muted my laptop and I thought for a second that maybe that muted my microphone, but it did not. So yay. Um, I would not be able to stay in touch with you if Facebook ceased to exist, if I did not collect those email addresses. I encourage everybody to definitely Facebook proof or Instagram proof. Now they're the same entity anyway, meta proof your business by making sure that you are, you have a way to connect with your clients and your audience, if that should all go poof, right? Um, but I ask you guys, what are you looking for in this group? And a lot of times, I would say maybe almost for 35, 40% of the time, I get marketing help. And sometimes I come back and I say, hey, I am so glad you're here, but I'm not the marketing girl, I'm the education girl. And sometimes I just ignore it and I figure you'll, you're going to figure out for yourself uh, real quickly that I don't share a lot of marketing advice in this group. That's not what I'm here for. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today is the problem probably in, I reconnected yesterday with someone who I had had a discovery call with like a year ago and asked her how, where she was in her course process. She said she created the course, it's not selling and she'd love some marketing help. And it was, that's sort of what prompted this whole thing. So I'm here to talk about why marketing probably isn't your problem and that there might be a different problem in your course design process. So in my 12 week bootcamp program, we spend the first two weeks talking about who your ideal client is 
what problem they have, if you are the right person to solve it, and if so, um, do you need more? Do you need more than what's already inside you or what you've already created? And then um, how you're going to deliver that solution to ensure that you get a transformation. So many of the people that I talk to that, you know, they get on an application call with me to apply for the boot camp, and I start going through, here's what we're going to cover. And they go, I already have that. And I am here to tell you that if that's your knee jerk reaction, if that's your like, yeah, I already, I already have that. I already know who my client is. I want you to stop and think for a second if that is absolutely true. I have always been really clear on who it is that I serve. I've done this work a dozen times. This week in an, an intensive with a business coach, I actually realized that the person I really want to serve, the, like my, my dream client, my soulmate client, as my friend Elisa Kay would say, is actually not the person that I previously would have described. I would have never known that if I hadn't worked with somebody who sort of pulled that information out of me. And that's kind of what I do with my, with my students inside the boot camp. And so if you're like, no, I already know who I serve. I'm, I'm crystal clear on that. Like I just, just take a minute and just, you know, check that pulse and make sure that you are really clear. Because if you're not really clear on who you serve and the problem that they have, you can't be sure that the solution that you offer, and that is your course or your program, solves that problem. I'm going to say that again. If you aren't exactly clear on who it is you serve, and what problem they have, you can't be sure that you are the solution and that you, what the thing you're creating actually will solve that problem and deliver that transformation for them. Because I've said it before, I'll say it again, nobody wants to buy your course. Nobody sitting in two o'clock in the morning browsing the internet looking for the next course to buy. We all wanna just, you know, let me buy a course. I wanna spend a thousand dollars on a course today. No. We're looking for a solution to a problem we have. We're pouring the internet because we're like, I can't get enough people on my list. And we come across a course that tells you how to put a hundred new people on your list in the next two weeks. And you're like, this is it. This is the solution. So that transformation is the most important part of the process, right? I hope you'll agree with that. That if you are doing what everyone's always told you. It's not your fault. You've just done what everyone's always told you. And you put some modules together in a course and you throw it up for sale on your website and it's not selling. You've missed the critical step. And that is identifying who that person is, what transformation they need and setting yourself up as the solution to that problem. And I hope that makes sense. And I'll explain to you why that, why, why that's the case. So if you don't know for absolutely for sure what, that's, what that problem is, what you're doing is you're basically curating a course full of all of the knowledge you have on the subject. Now, I taught at the college level medical assisting, medical things, uh, for several years. I could, and it, it was a two-year-long program that I taught. And so, you know, some of it's generals but whatever, 12, 13, 14 of the courses were medical courses. And I, I taught every single one of them at one point or another. If you ask me, Tracy, what do you know about healthcare? What do you know about being a medical assistant? I could fill volumes with what I know in my head. But if I'm coming at this from a, I'm trying to solve a problem for you, like maybe like I, for a while after I finished teaching, I tutored people who were trying to take the certified medical assistant exam. And if you're saying, Tracy, I just need to pass the CMA exam, I'm not going to rehash everything that I know for you. Like, like that would take, you know, it'd take two years and it's not going to be helpful for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you only what you need to solve your problem. I'm going to give you only what you need to pass the certification exam. I have taken it myself three times. I know what's on it. I know exactly what you need to pre work on and practice in order to pass. That's all I'm going to give you. I'm not going to give you all this other crap, this other fluff that you don't need. Is, is this is starting to make sense then. <laughs> so if you are making a course from this place of, I want to share everything I know with the world and that's beautiful. It's wonderful, but that's not serving your client and it's not solving their problem. 
And you might sell courses. You might be gifted enough with the marketing and the messaging that you might sell courses, but your learner gets inside. They're like, holy shit, 24 modules? Not a chance, not doing it. Peace out. And that's why only 8% of people who buy courses actually finish them because they're not curated content that they actually, actually need in order to move forward. So the problem that you have, my dear, is not your marketing per se, but it is this belief that everybody gave you that, you know, everybody tells you the thing, the only thing you have to do is just put this course together and they will come. If you build it, they will come. It's not true. You have to find the right people. You have to ask them the right questions. You have to make sure that you're crystal clear on the problem that they have, that you're crystal clear, even more crystal or clear <laughs> on your ability to solve that problem. And then you have to make sure that you're structuring that course content, structuring those videos, those lessons, those workbooks, all of the things that you include in a way that ensures you deliver what you promise. If you don't do that, then you won't sell courses. And that could be where a lot of you are. I know so many people joining the group are like, I've already created a course and you know, like, and they're in your here, right? So you, you apparently didn't feel like you needed me to help you put it together, but you're still here. You're still looking for something that you might be missing and that might be it. So in this spirit of me, like disassembling my business and putting it back together the right way, I want you to think really hard if you already have a course on, did you put this thing together the right way? Are you really sure that you're delivering that transformation that you offer? And are you really sure that your ideal client avatar, whoever that is for you, really wants and needs what you've put together? I teach how to do this in, in a focus group format. It's a, um, it's a couple week process. I mean, it's not something that you can do overnight but I teach basically how to, how to market research your program and to basically sell it out, sell out you know, your beta version or your first iteration of that program using focus groups and other people's audiences. It's, it's something I've done several times. I'm actually doing again with this rebrand and it's super, super effective for helping you get ridiculously clear on what you're creating, what the price point should be, who it's for, whether or not those people realize that they need the solution or not, and all of the things, basically getting a room full, a Zoom room, as it were, full of your ideal client and you know, the ideal clients, you know, as many as you want to get in the room and asking them some really key questions that deliver um, all of the information that you need, in my opinion, to move forward and possibly even sell that program to those people who sort of helped you structure it. If you're interested in that training, definitely drop me an emoji or some, you know, something to say, hey, Tracy, I want it, uh, focus groups, thumbs up, whatever that might be, and I can see that you get that. Um, it's a $47, it's a $97 course easily. Um, I sell it right now for $47. If there is enough interest, I might be persuaded to do it. Um, and just, just for those of you in the group, um, for, for something else, well, we'll see what the interest is. But if, um, if that's something that's been holding you back from creating your course, or that you think could be really beneficial in helping you sort of dismantle what you've created and restructure it, then definitely, definitely let me know. I want to serve you in that way. Um, the other, you know, the other thing, of course, I've been talking about the doors are closing on Monday for this, um, this cohort of the bootcamp program. Um, I call it the course college, but it's got to have a new name. If, if you have name suggestions, let me know um, where we basically are talking about how to take your framework and your um, method for how you work with your clients and turn that in to a course or a group program that helps you create more impact, create more transformation, make more money while still spending more time with the people you love uh, doing the things that you want to do. So um, if that's something that you're interested in, also let me know that too. Uh, but let's kind of re recap where, you know, what, what we're talking about here. So basically, if you have put together a course and it's not selling, before you look at 
what your marketing, you know, and, and the, like, maybe I should get ads. Where should I put it on Facebook? Like all of those things, right. When that's what I mean, when I talk about marketing, you should definitely look at your messaging around that thing. Your problem is probably messaging, but also you really can't structure your messaging unless you're very, very sure who it's for, what problem it solves and how exactly you deliver that transformation. Depending on the price point of your program, I personally, I think that the, the lower you sell it, the less it's going to sell, which I know doesn't make a lot of sense, but there's two different um, psychologies at work there. One of them is it's probably not worth anything if she's selling it for $7. And the other is that even if you do sell it, you know, $7, you have to sell a hundred of them to make $700, but people who don't pay, don't pay attention. So people who have not put some skin in the game and really invested in that program are not going to get the outcome that you want them to have. Like, it's just, it's 8% of people, you know, who buy a course, finish the course. It's even less than that when you start looking at like lower price points. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, I'm do, 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 do pricing. Yeah. So if, unless you're really clear on who you're serving and, and the transformation you deliver and all those things, you can't be clear in your messaging. You can't be persuasive in your messaging and your marketing in order to get people in. So that's my soapbox speech for today. Thank you for coming to my Ted talk. Um, I'm here to tell you that your problem is probably not your marketing, but that you just aren't super clear on what it is you do and who it's for. And if you want to get more clarity around that, uh, definitely reach out to me. Um, in addition to the boot camp, I also do have a DIY program. Uh, I'm going to talk next week about why DIY might not be exactly what you want, even though we feel like it's what we want. And I'll, I'll share those, share that uh, wisdom with you next week sometime. I'll get it scheduled. Um, but I do, I do have one. Um, it's, you know, significantly less expensive, obviously, than working with me one-on-one -on -one or working with me in the boot camp. So if, if that's a consideration and you really, really want to do this work around your ideal client, um, then hit me up, but that's what I have for you today. Um, don't be afraid to deconstruct a little bit. It's a great way. You know, my, my mother always used to say, you have to make a mess in order to clean up a mess. So I'm also in the, in the, in the process of like cleaning out, uh, decluttering my bedroom. I'm going to have surgery in July and be spending a lot of time in my room as a, as a result of that. So I want it to be not the way it is right now and pulling everything out of drawers and pulling everything out of the closet so that you can get things organized makes a bigger mess before it makes a really nice, clean, organized closet and bedroom. Right. And the same thing goes with our marketing and with our courses. Sometimes we have to deconstruct things a little bit, make things a little messy in order to refine and tweak. And I am here to tell you that if you are afraid of tweaking and refining your programs after you've created them, then you're missing the entire boat because that is um, a big part of the course creation process and responsibility as, as far as I'm concerned. So that's my TED talk. Thank you so much for coming. And if you have questions, comments, concerns, please post them in the comments and I will circle back and respond to all of them. Thanks, you guys. Have a wonderful weekend and always know, please, that I appreciate you.